Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, we'll be seeing how we can turn an ordinary image like this, which is full of noise, isn't even sharp, and then turn it into a professional looking headshot using some free AI tools. So let's get started. The first tool that we're gonna be using is Pencil AI, which is something I've been showing in a lot of my recent videos. And once you go here, all the links to the, all the tools have been given in the description as well as the image has been given in the description of this video. So you'll be able to download everything from there. You go to tools and then we will be using the AI portrait tool here. And in case you wanna see how this works properly in more detail, you can click on the link above because I have a separate video on this tool, but it's fairly straightforward to use. What we are gonna do is we're just gonna upload that image that we just saw right here. All right, so we've got the image here and now we're gonna select the correct gender and under styles, I always select no style. So we are not selecting any sort of a style for a preset and it's just gonna be on the default and you can now type in your prompt here. So one way is that of course you can type your own prompt but since they already give us a few presets, there are a few which have a headshot and one of them is this realtor headshot. So if I click on this, this usually works very well because the moment you click on a preset here, you automatically get the prompt, it automatically also starts to generate. And on this tool, you have 20 generations for free. So it's gonna turn this into something like this. But let's say if you wanted, and you can see, right, this looks good. But if you did want some other things here, maybe you wanted something else, then just change the prompt here, right? So instead of blurred residential background, maybe you can say white studio, uh, background. If you wanted some different kind of a theme, instead of realtor, you can write something else. Another one that I've seen, so what we're gonna do is, first of all, since this looks good, we're gonna hit download, okay? And another one that works really well for professional headshots is this one, okay? The last one that you saw with the guy wearing the formals, and you can see wearing spring fashion outfit. Only thing will be, if you're going for a headshot, this time we'll just change this to a headshot, okay? So first of all, let's see the result that we've got here. So this is the result, but if we change this to, let's say, professional headshot, let's see the results there also. And maybe we can just say if wearing formals. So it's just that these presets give you a good idea where to start and then to edit these prompts. So let's hit generate. All right, and you can see that this also looks good. But one of the issues in both the generations that we got is that if you compare this with the original, it has maintained the face well. It's even kept the hairstyle on the top part the same, but the problem is when it comes to the side part of the hair, he's got these long uh, hair which are flowing down and we need to just add that. Now before, we're gonna be using Photoshop beta for that, but before we do that, in order just to make it more realistic, we're gonna be using the Remaker uh, free face swapping tool here. So again, the link will be given in the description. Let's add both the images just to make it even more real than what it is right now. All right, so we're gonna be using our the first generation that we had got from the realtor headshot because I think that looked better. So this is our original image and on the target face image, we're gonna upload his original image and then we're gonna hit swap. All right, so we've got the result here and this time you can see it has just made the face slightly more narrower, which is uh, similar to his original face. And now even the things like beard and all overall the image just looks much more closer to him except for the hair here, okay? So we're gonna completely change the hair because if you notice in this particular image, uh, this, it has just changed the hairstyle a bit. So this is where Photoshop beta comes into play because we can add a reference image and use generative fill to make it similar to what he has here. So let's open Photoshop beta and let's change this. All right, so I've just opened up Photoshop beta. In case you don't have Photoshop beta, you will find the link in the description to download the photography plan that Adobe offers where you get Photoshop and Lightroom. And there you'll get a seven day free trial because you'll also be able to download Photoshop beta, which is an app where Adobe usually puts anything that is undergoing a test right now before it moves on to Photoshop. So one of the features is the reference image feature, which has still not been passed on to Photoshop. And it comes in the generative fill contextual taskbar. So what we can do is since we don't like the hair here, Remember his original hair are much longer, so we can just take any of the manual selection tools like the lasso tool and just draw that part here where we want that hairstyle to come. Okay, so something like this. It can be a bit rough, don't worry about it. It handles it pretty well. And then before just writing in the prompt something like change hairstyle, we can add a reference image. So we're gonna add our original headshot of this person. Right, so we've got the headshot here and now we can type in change 
here because then it's gonna notice that image and it's gonna try to produce something similar to that. So let's wait for this. All right, so these are the results that we've got and I think because if I just undo things, okay, uh, because in my selection I had given more room here, then on the right part I think it's added more of the uh, volume to that side. So we're just gonna keep this a bit narrow, okay, and slightly equal. Sometimes these things are a bit of a hit and miss. You just have to uh, do it again. So let's just do the same thing again. And this time let's hit generate again. All right, so this time these are the results that we've got. Let's see all the three results. This is the first one, second one, and this is the third one. I think this looks the closest to what we had in the original image. Let's just check it once. Yeah, so now if you just keep it side by side, you can see that this is starting to get closer uh, to what we want. And once that is the case, so this was the third generation, we can always so we know that we've got a good backup here. This will serve well because it has even added those texture on the top part. But we can always, once we like something, we can hit generate similar. So maybe it will produce even better results. So let's wait for this. All right, so we've got three more results here. This one doesn't look good. This also doesn't look good. And I think probably this one would have been better, but I think if we compare this one, this is the closest to what we've got. Now, one more thing. Oftentimes when you do create these AI portraits, you might find that the eyes are pointed somewhere else, he's probably not looking in the camera, or maybe it can happen that he is looking in the camera, but you want him to look somewhere else, okay? So I just wanna quickly show you one more free AI tool, which is called reshot.ai, and the AI eyes editor tool, which can help you to change the direction of the eyes also. For example, in this case, if we upload the same portrait here, or actually, let me show you one more portrait which I had created where he was actually looking somewhere else, and I'm gonna put that here. This was another headshot that I created using exactly the same method that I showed you. It's just that in this result, he was looking this side. So what you can do is once you go to this tool and you upload the image here, you just get this little joystick-like thing which you can just use slightly. So I just need to move his eyes slightly to the left and just do it very slowly because it is pretty sensitive. It moves it very aggressively. So maybe something like this. And you can see he's getting closer to what we want. And you can see that now he is looking inside the camera. And out of all the different eye changing, eye direction changing AI tools that I've tried, this one gives the most natural results. So once you're happy with this, we are gonna hit download image and all these images are slightly downscaled because we've been using free versions of everything. So final, the final step will be to upscale the image. So to upscale the images, we're gonna be using upscale media AI, which is again a free AI tool and let's do it for one of the images. All right, so you, with a single click, we have been able to double the resolution and you can clearly see Notice the before and after, this looks much sharper. In these cases, I also like to click on enhance quality, which also further makes it sharper, especially near the edges, like the eyes and all the stuff, and it just looks much better. So this time you can see, even improves it more. And you, can, you do have the option of even going for something larger in case you need a printout. But for social media purpose, this should be fine. I also did it for the second image. So now finally, if we look at the results here, we've got this and I think this looks pretty good considering the fact that we used mainly free tools out there. Right, so if this video helped you out, do give it a like. I'm someone who's doing a lot of experiments with how free AI tools and sometimes even the paid ones can help photographers do their job in a much quicker and easier manner. So if you want to follow these experiments, do subscribe and I will see you next time.